Dava. Okay. So that's probably one of your first real basic bends. And what it says on here, this has got a, it, it says five inches. I know this is just a fender, but this one is still five inches sub up on the arrow. So what happens, let's say, let's say you want to do this and you want this to be 12 inches. Okay. And we'll do this out in the lab. So you take your piece of pipe. Okay. And you come back here and you mark, here's your 12 inches. Okay. If you want have to mark it as such. But then it says subtract five inches for a stub up. So now we've got to subtract five inches here. And let's say that here is five inches and then we'll put a mark here. Okay. And that mark on this bender is going to tell you that the mark goes right on the arrow. There's an arrow right in front of the, the hook on the bender. And that's where you put that mark here. And then you bend your pipe, you bend your conduit that way. And then when you're done, it's gonna come up and it'll be exactly 12 inches up off the floor at the end of the pipe. Okay. So, like I said, we'll do that right away. And you might find out, wow, we put that mark here. What, what else could we do? You could just put a mark here at seven, right? So, in actuality, when you, when you, after you bend for a while, you're not going to be putting a mark back here and putting a mark here and stuff. You might just put a mark here. You might just hold it in the bender and measure it right there and not even have to put a mark on the pipe. But for now, we're going to mark the pipe. Okay. You can always tell if a person has bent a lot of pipe or not, if you look at piping that's, on, that's installed, sometimes you'll see marks all over the place. Sometimes you won't see any marks at all. If you don't see any marks at all, you know that person's been bending for a while. They don't have to put a mark on the pipe and draw a circle all the way around it and stuff. So you can see it when you flip the, the bender one way or the other, but we'll be doing that. We'll, don't feel bad about putting marks around. We're just learning, okay? And then, if you want, you can use these expo markers and then wipe your marks off. <laughs> okay, so that's a 90 degree stub up. So we'll do that, and you mark it seven inches, you'll bend it, and it'll come out to 11 and three quarter, 11 and seven eighths. So what does that tell you? We came out to 11 and seven eighths. You can mark that in there. Yep, you gotta move your mark another eighth inch so that you make up that eighth inch that you lost, okay? Now, I do this, if I'm gonna use a bender that isn't one of my benders that I use all the time, let's say I'm borrowing somebody's or I'm out to, to do something or demonstrate something or show something and I don't have my bender, that's the first thing I'll do. I'll take the bender, I'll look at it, I'll see what the subtraction is, I'll put a mark on the pipe, I like 12 inches, and, and I'll bend it and then see where I'm at and then I'll adjust it, okay? So we'll do that, okay? okay. So that's a stub up bend. And then, what's our, the next bend? Does he have that on the chart here? Yeah. So we got the 90 degree bend, stub up, then we got a back to back bend, right? So a back to back bend is something like this. We got another, 90 degree stub up here, and let's say this dimension is what you want. This is your dimension D, okay? You ever have to make a bend like that? Come up between two boxes, come up, you got a box here and a box here, and you come out of this box, go down, come up into the other box. Or if you have a, a wall, let's say, there's a wall here, and there's a pilaster here, and then um, another extrusion over here. And you want to put a, a box on the wall here, and there's a box. But let's say you're coming around this pilaster, so you want to do a stub here, a stub 
here, and then you put a fitting here and LV for going around that one. Okay, so that's what they call a back the back bend. So, what does it tell us on the chart? We can practice this. We'll take uh, one of the toolboxes and I'll open it up and I'll have you make a back-to-back -back bend that fits right inside this toolbox, right be between those two walls. So you can measure it and then you can calculate it out and do the back-to-back, -back, okay? So here it, it, it tells you to measure and put a mark, the distance on the conduit from the fixed point and then on the back of the 90 to be bend and align it with um, with the B or the star on the bender to make a 90 degree bend. So on this bender, there's a star on here and a B, okay, that you can see here, there's a little mark on a point that you can line that mark up with to do a back-to-back -back bend, okay? So the bender's all set up for that. I'll show you another way to do it, or, or can you think of another way to do it? Let's say I put this bend in the conduit first. Okay. Now I want to come out here to do this. Let's let's make a let's make a measure. Let's call it 30 inches. Okay. Now I got this piece of pipe that's got a bend in here and it comes out straight now. How could I mark this? So just do another stub up, right? So act like it's another stub up. Act like this is your wall and this is our stub up that we want. We want a stub up of 30 inches. So we can measure right in the back of this bend, subtract the five inches, put a mark here at 25 inches from here, then do a stub up and we're done. Right? Good. Okay, so there's a couple different ways of doing that. That's actually the way I prefer because then I don't have to try to find another mark on the bender. I don't have to subtract a different amount. I just know I got my five inches and that's it. Five inches on the half inch bender, usually on the three quarter inch bender at six inches. Inch and a quarter bender is 12 inches. So that's the back to back. Then, what other kind of bends do you make? Oh, I should have said, well, another way of doing the back to back, which might be how you did a back to back before. You have this, and you cut that pipe off, and you make another one, and you cut that pipe off, right at the right line, <laughs> and then you put a couple in there. Okay? <laughs> That works pretty good for a back-to-back -back bend too, right? <laughs> and then you make one, you hold it in there, the other one, and then mark your pipe. Okay. So we're gonna start out here. We're gonna let's do a seven inch, okay? So we'll do a seven inch stop and we'll subtract um what's it? I'm hardly, I'm not, I'm just holding this so it doesn't hit me. I'm not pushing here, I'm doing the bending with the foot. And now once I get over, I can push a little bit on here, but I still got my foot pressure on. Now I'll bend up to my 90 degrees. Okay. So now, I check it. Okay. Pretty good. Now measure up. Now we'll measure and see if we got our seven inches. Or ten inches. What did I do? I marked it at seven and five. So there's my ten. 
and smooth this one is and this has got a little step in it here okay, or here I should say get what I'm saying and that's what's going to happen because okay so look at it like that because if you if you keep good steady foot pressure on it all the time you're going to get a nice smooth sure. now it might not make that much of a difference but okay so let's continue let's try to create a little bit more so, do that. Get another kick out of it here. And then I'll show you. I'm going to do that back to back. So, that's pretty good. Cool. Okay. Now, what you did. Bend a little more. Okay. 
Okay. Now this one, what you should be able to do, since you're in here so tight, is to turn your bend around this way. And bend it like this. Okay. Now we're gonna end up. So what you want to do is you gotta leave this off and then chew a little bit. Okay. Okay. So now we can try it. Okay. 